Dark of All Trades here. Now I don't know about you, but I have been wrong before. Wrong! And it is very likely I'll be wrong again. Wrong! I may even be wrong in this video. Wrong! Every cognizant human gets something wrong in their lifetime. We are only human, after all. I think that's what demonstrates the kind of person we are, at least in the academic or epistemological sense, is what we do about it when we are told we're wrong about something. Wrong. I am constantly striving to learn as much as I reasonably can take in, and also helping others with their understanding of life, the universe, and everything. Well, much to my surprise, I happened upon a channel called Mason Menenga. With only 33 videos, he has a respectable amount of subscribers, but I am catching up. Anyway. Mason here put out a video titled, Three Things Atheists Get Wrong About Theism. Well, I'm an atheist, and I talk about theism quite a bit. What could I be getting wrong about theism? Let's check out the video and find out. Maybe I'll be singing a different tune after this. Hey all, Mason Meninga here. If you watched enough of my videos, you probably have figured out by now that conservative Christians annoy me. They're the kind of people who would go to the urinal right next to you, even though there are plenty of other empty ones, and ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? But almost equally as annoying are fundamentalist atheists who would start peeing in the urinal you're peeing in and ask, have you ever read our personal Lord and Savior, Richard Dawkins? There are so many atheists who are just as certain about their beliefs as fundamentalist Christians. But have these atheists ever thought that their understanding of theism might be wrong? Obviously, fundamentalist Christians are wrong about why they believe God exists. But is it possible that many atheists could also be wrong not just about why they believe God does not exist, but also peeing right next to you in a public bathroom? So today, I'll be talking about three things atheists get wrong about theism. I'm going to skip the promotional bit of his intro. I initially was going to cut more, but he references his weird intro later on, so I have to leave the preamble in. He doesn't particularly say anything relevant to the title, and I will cut back in after the self-promotion. If you think I'm cutting something out important, I left a link to the original video in the description. I don't think you're missing anything important, but if you watch it and think I cut something I shouldn't have, I'm always up for correcting my mistakes. Anyway, fast forwarding. Before talking about three things atheists get wrong about theism, I first want to mention that I don't believe all atheists get theism wrong. Well, that's good to hear. It also kind of puts a damper on the video. I wonder what kind of atheist he does think it's theism wrong. Do I fall into that category? Or is this whole video just a waste of my time? I guess I'll find out. There are many atheists who have very good reasons to believe God does not exist. There are good reasons to believe God does not exist. Well, good on you for recognizing that. So you're an atheist, right? I'm responding to an atheist? Oh, I guess not. Like, how can an all-good and all-powerful God allow evil? Or the band Skillet in the world? It's funny because Skillet is a Christian rock band that is arguably the most popular in the mainstream rock world, at least in the U.S. The association of Skillet and the problem of evil is amusing, quick and subtle, 9.5 out of 10. But despite good reasons to not believe in God, there are many other atheists who don't just seem to not believe in God, but they also are against God. They're not just atheists, they are anti-theists. I would classify myself as an anti-theist, though I am not against God in that I am combating any God, as I am not fighting against something I don't believe exists. I am more along the lines that I actively believe that any coherent God put forth by theists does not exist. The problem of evil is a decent argument against the God Mason likely believes in, but there are better arguments. But I think I get the point. It's these kind of atheists I'm talking about in this video, and who are the ones who pee right next to you when there are other open toilets. These atheists seem so certain about their belief that God does not exist, and in the process, they completely misunderstand theism. So here are three things these atheists get wrong about theism. The first thing many atheists get wrong about theism is that the existence of God is a metaphysical question, not a scientific one. Well, yes and no. Perhaps the wording here wasn't quite precise enough. The question of whether or not something exists in reality can be considered a metaphysical question. Metaphysics deals with the fundamental questions about the nature of reality, existence, and being. When you inquire about the existence of something in reality, you are exploring the nature of that thing's existence and its relationship to the broader framework of reality. However, theism is the acceptance of the proposition that some number of gods exist in reality. 
When discussing the existence of something that exists in reality, you are dealing with a question that can often be addressed through the empirical evidence, observation, and scientific investigation. This falls more within the realm of empirical inquiry rather than metaphysical speculation. This leads to one of my favorite arguments against the existence of God, and that is the lack of evidence where evidence would be expected. If a God exists, then it has a demonstrable effect on reality. Before anyone tries to call a black swan fallacy here, we need to ask the question, what is the difference between a God that has no demonstrable effect on reality and a God that doesn't exist? As much fun as questioning the nature of reality is, it gets us no closer to showing that a God actually exists in reality, which is all I really care about. You might be wondering, Mason, what does the existence of God have to do with metaphysical things like crystals, being a Libra, and tarot cards? So when I'm talking about metaphysical questions, I'm not talking about questions like, does my boyfriend suck because he's a Leo? I'm talking about the questions about the fundamental nature of reality. How is reality structured? What is existence? What causes things to happen? In order to answer God to any of these questions, you first need to demonstrate that the existence of God is possible before it can be a candidate explanation. Otherwise, you can just make up whatever you want for the answer. What causes things to happen? Well, of course, it's the magical space primordial crystal. The magical space primordial crystal is an enigmatic relic suspended within the cosmic void, emanating an otherworldly luminescence. It predates the birth of stars and galaxies, serving as an immutable source of cosmic balance and creative energy, offering a secular explanation for the universe's order and existence in lieu of a deity. We know crystals exist and can be found in space, so we already have fewer assumptions than you do for your god as an answer to the metaphysical questions you put forth. But usually questions about God's existence are talked about as scientific questions, not metaphysical ones. Usually atheists ask questions like, what is the scientific proof that there is a God? As if a scientist could hypothesize the existence of God, run tests, and then make a conclusion about if God exists on the results of the tests. We're talking about God, not a lab rat. Why would anyone think God's existence could be proven scientifically if we are talking about the God of the universe? I think that is the point. Science is the investigation of the natural world. As I stated earlier, if something exists in reality, it has an effect on reality in some way. Something that doesn't have an effect on reality is indistinguishable from something that doesn't exist. You would need to find a way to differentiate the two. If it doesn't exist in reality, then it has no effect on me, and as such, I don't care about it at all. No one would be able to notice it no matter what. Would it be possible that God may not exist exactly the same way a lab rat exists, so it might be a bit challenging to test the existence of God? That isn't my problem. If you can't test the existence of something, then it is a useless proposition. Until you can come up with a test, you have no reason to accept this God exists in reality. So there are many atheists who make the mistake of thinking that the question of the existence of God is a scientific question when it actually is a metaphysical question. Yeah, I got that you think that. No need to repeat the point from a minute and 20 seconds ago in your video. I know I have ADD, but I did pay attention long enough to not forget that point. I think a much more interesting question I don't care about what question is more interesting. I care about what exists in reality. And does God exist is can God fit in your understanding of metaphysics? In other words, given how you understand the fundamental nature of reality, can God fit in that? Sir, I had no need for that hypothesis. Alfred North Whitehead was an early 20th century mathematician and philosopher, and he developed an entire metaphysics that he called philosophy of organism. And even though he was a well-educated mathematician, he proposed that within his metaphysics, that God makes sense in a philosophy of organism. So he believed in God. What was the point of this? A mathematician and philosopher invented a philosophical point of view that is not widely accepted? I guess to touch on this very briefly for all you philosophy buffs. For you non-philosophy buffs, grab a cup of tea, grab a coffee, grab an energy drink, grab a drink of water, whatever you like, because this is going to be a bit. The philosophy of organism is a metaphysical framework that posits reality as a dynamic and interconnected web of processes. It proposes that the fundamental units of existence are not isolated particles, but actual occasions that continuously interact and evolve. These occasions, or organisms, are not limited to living beings, but encompasses all entities from atoms to complex systems. The philosophy of organism emphasizes the intrinsic interdependence, creativity, and fluidity of the universe, offering an alternative perspective to traditional atomistic and mechanistic views of reality. 
It underscores the importance of relationships, experiences, and holistic understanding in describing the nature of existence. The main criticisms of philosophy of organisms start with the perceived complexity and difficulty of comprehension. Whitehead's writing on this are dense and abstract, making his ideas challenging to grasp for many readers. The intricate terminology and concepts he introduced can be a barrier to understanding and applying his philosophy, leading some critics to argue that it lacks clarity and accessibility. Next, the philosophy of organisms' emphasis on speculative metaphysics and abstract concepts makes it difficult to subject its ideas to empirical testing or scientific verification. Unlike more empirically grounded approaches, the philosophy of organism might be seen as lacking a clear methodology for confirming or falsifying its claims, potentially limiting its practical applicability and acceptance within empirical disciplines. Finally, while the philosophy of organism challenges reductionism and offers a holistic perspective, critics may argue that it goes too far in its rejection of reductionist approaches. Some might contend that by emphasizing interconnectedness and process to such a degree, the philosophy of organism risks overlooking the importance of reductionist explanations and fails to fully engage with the valuable insights provided by scientific disciplines that rely on reductionist methodologies. There's a lot more I could go into, but let's just move on for now. I'm not sure why he brought this up, unless it was to say, This smart guy also believes in God, and in the philosophical framework he invented, God is not incompatible. It's a whole lot of, if this untestable philosophical idea is true, then God is not necessarily excluded from it. That isn't a great point. Although after I do math, I definitely stop believing in God. So many atheists get theism wrong by thinking that the question of God's existence is a scientific question, where they think God's existence can be scientifically proven. Instead, these atheists should begin to recognize that the question of God's existence is actually a metaphysical question about if God makes sense given how they understand the nature of reality. The second thing many atheists get wrong about theism is that not all theists are fundamentalist Christians. I have not heard this point a single time. I live in the U.S. where Christianity is the dominant religion. The same is true for Latin and South America. Of course, I would wager quite a bit that, in general, atheists know there are other religions. Do you think some significant number of atheists don't think Muslims exist? Sticking to the Christianity aspect, do you think that any significant number of atheists don't think there are more extreme and less extreme flavors of Christianity? I'm not sure where you're getting this information from, but either your wording is really poor here, or you are just way off. Well, let's see your explanation. When many atheists debate theists, they assume all theists believe in the same kind of God. Atheists are obviously atheists to the fundamentalist Christian understanding of God. But I'm a theist, and I'm an atheist to that understanding of God, too. If I am to grant all of that, we then need to look at why is there this misunderstanding. I would argue that it is largely in part to the fundamentals of your religion. What God any particular Christian believes in varies so much that the idea of God is so ill-defined that it leaves so much room for misunderstanding, so much so to the point that the reason why I don't go out and disprove every single God is because that would take lifetimes just to do the variations on the Christian God. When I disprove what I think are the first nine points, then disassemble the tenth point, all the theist needs to say is, I don't believe that God has that tenth quality, so you're disproving a God I don't believe in anyway. As if that invalidates the nine other points. So when having a debate about a God, it is so easy to move the goalposts as to what would disprove the God the debate opponent believes. I've seen many debates where the Christian will attempt to argue specifically not for the God they believe exists, but for some sort of deistic God. That is so often not the God anyone listening to these debates thinks exists. So dismantling the basic arguments won't resonate with many Christians, so they can just maintain their belief. If you all could just come to a consensus about what a God is and its properties, then we can talk. Until then, I'm not going to try to disprove the thousands of proposed gods throughout history. A perfect example of this is when Bill Nye debated fundamentalist Christian and man who clearly didn't evolve from apes, Ken Ham. But the thing is, many Christians don't even understand God the same way as Ken Ham. I don't think Ken Ham understands God in the same way as Ken Ham. And that doesn't even include how many more theists in general don't understand God the same way as Ken Ham. I get that there are millions of Christians who do understand God the same way Ken Ham does. But the problem is why would an atheist want to debate the dumbest understanding of God? Why would a theist want to put forth the dumbest understanding of God? To answer your question, there are several reasons. Ken Ham has money. Ken Ham has a platform. Ken Ham has influence. 
If a debate turns one person away from giving money to any potential grifter, I am okay with it. Plus, it is way easier to disassemble Ken Ham's arguments and make him look foolish than it is to do that with someone who is better educated and better spoken. For example, whether you think so or not, William Lake Craig has some serious debate skills. Maybe I'm too much of a sports bro, and you can see that I was. But wouldn't atheists want to show off how much better atheism is than theism by debating the best understandings of God? Yes, and we do pretty regularly. It gets to the point, however, where the points have been debated over and over, shown why the idea of God is so faulty over and over, explain why the facts like evolution are actually facts over and over, and the apologist is asked for evidence over and over, and the best that they have is to offer the arguments that were posited centuries ago and were shown to be fallacious around the same time. It is now to the point where people just don't debate people like Kent Hovind or Ray Comfort because they have been shown the evidence over and over, but they deny it due to their belief in their book, which has also been shown to be monumentally flawed. Now, people don't give these guys their platform because of their intellectual dishonesty. Even William Lane Craig has been shown why the Kalam cosmological argument was flawed, and he started to change his mind on it, or at least claimed to, but within months, he was right back to saying it was the best argument he knew. Bill Nye debating Ken Ham is like NBA players playing against kids. I couldn't agree more. But that's not because Bill Nye knows more about metaphysics than Ken Ham does, though I would bet he does. It is because reality disagrees with the notion of any of the Christian gods. So really, an atheist who is educated in apologetics would trounce a theist with the same information. This is because why? Theists start with the conclusion and work backward. Or like Calvinists doing a Bible sword drill against me. So believe it or not, atheists and many theists, like me, have a lot more in common than many atheists might realize, since neither of us believe in the kind of God that fundamentalist Christians believe in. The third and final thing that atheists get wrong about theism is that there are many other theisms than the fundamentalist Christian understanding of theism. Isn't this effectively the same reason as number two? If not all theists are fundamental Christians, then there must be other theisms other than the fundamental Christian understanding of theism. A theist believes in theism. Theism has many subcategories. One of those subcategories leads to Christianity. Christianity has many of its own subcategories. Islam has its own subcategories too, as does theistic Buddhism. Both number two and number three could have been condensed to many other religions besides fundamentalist Christian exist and have followers. What atheist thinks that when it comes to religion, only Christian fundamentalism exists? None that I've ever met. I just started the next part, and I'm going to skip ahead as he just starts explaining examples of other types of theism. You may be an atheist who still does not find any of these theisms compelling enough to be a pantheist, panentheist, or polytheist. And it's okay not to be a panentheist, except that you're wrong. Oh, really? I guess it's okay that you think this, except that you're wrong. But I think atheists should at least be aware of these types of theisms and realize how they are very different than the fundamentalist Christian theism. Oh, I think I get what you were saying here. When you said other theisms, you mean the very broad categories that are not monotheism. I was aware of paganism as a child, but not well educated in it. Wicca was also becoming popular when I was in school. I didn't know much about it, but enjoyed talking about it. It wasn't until I was already an atheist and in my 30s that I had even heard of panentheism. So I can understand why you'd say this. But I don't think that justifies a separate reason. Just combine two and three. Or is this because you need three reasons and you don't have another one? I can understand that. Atheists tend to be better educated on religion than theists. So when atheists argue about how they don't believe in God, they should be clear the God that they don't believe in is a God that many other theists, including myself, don't believe in as well. Atheism is a response to the claim of theism. Even the acceptance of the counterclaim still requires the first claim. Your definition of God is what matters when talking to you about it. It isn't up to the atheist to define the God, because as you said, you might not believe in that God, which means talking about it is a waste of time. So there you have it. Three things atheists get wrong about theism. Many atheists get theism wrong by thinking that the existence of God is a scientific question, not a metaphysical one. Many atheists also get theism wrong by believing all theists are fundamentalist Christians. And similarly, many atheists get theism wrong by not understanding the many other interesting forms of theism besides fundamentalist Christian theism. 
So now you know why many atheists are wrong about theism. So you can flip the script on them and go pee right next to them in public bathrooms and start telling them why Mason Menega thinks they're wrong. And that's the end of his video. So we summarized it enough at the end there, and there wasn't much to his claims. If only theists would send their best and brightest to defend their claims, and the others would accept when evidence is shown to them we could talk about the God they believe in, but there is no consensus. This is another strong argument against God. The fact that there are different gods and even different versions of the same god points heavily to the idea that these beings are all part of some likely separate narratives that we no longer have a good reason to accept one over any of the other proposed deities. The wrong with the wrong That's it for this one. What did you think? Do you think that Mason here has a rock-solid understanding of atheists and what they don't understand? Or do you think that this video was an excuse to complain about very obvious straw men? Let me know in the comments below. What did you think about his reasons? Have you heard any atheists make any arguments that would imply that they don't understand these three, really two and a half, points? Rather than entertain the metaphysical, you can take the physical action to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Though, since there are other types of contentisms, you can show your belief in mine by hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Special thanks to the patrons, Long Haired Lefty and Jamabomb, as well as a new patron, Musical Ocelot, which, fantastic name by the way, who keep my channel grounded in the physical and not float off into the metaverse. Another super thanks to Ticker62 for his super thanks on my video response to Baptist Ed. He writes, Thanks. This was an excellent look at the way tunnel vision limits theistic worldviews. Ed speaks as though he has the ultimate answer by ignoring so many other perspectives. Have you ever considered a video focusing on topics like faith healing? I have a very good friend who is a Ricky master, and I would be interested in your thoughts. Well, Tigger62, I have thought about that. Since I was pagan, then specifically Wiccan for a while, between being a Christian and an atheist, I was a big fan of geomancy and the use of semi-precious stones for things like energy work and protection, etc. I also used to read tarot pretty frequently for others, though I never charged for it. Even now I have friends who still believe in all that and more. I would be up for the idea of making a video talking about it, especially on the idea of why people think it works and what is actually going on. Excellent idea. These people keep me going, allowing me to keep putting out content every week. In fact, I have a second video that should be up soon, if it isn't already, from the first series I started. If you'd like to stand with me as I challenge the existence of a god, you can join them for as low as a dollar a month at patreon.com front slash dark of all trades. Or you can jump in one video at a time with that super thanks option. All of your support really means the world to me. And as always, keep learning.